Hi everyone, welcome. Hi guys. Hi Butterfly and Lisa and Kenny. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hi, Becky. Welcome. Good morning, Cassandra. Hi, Joey. Welcome. <laughs> um, I have couple of links. First of all, if you haven't got the freebie, it is available here, if it's not too long. And um, the link is in the description below as well, so you can check it out there. Also on Patreon, and um, yeah, it's all there. Hi Debbie, welcome. Hi Lily, welcome. Hi Linda, welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Came out of nowhere. Hay fever. So for those of you that um, haven't seen any of uh, the Davidson family art, uh, I will pop it on here. So both Matt and Dawn do images on Etsy. So I'll pop the link in the chat box there as well. Oh no, Lulu, I hope you feel better. Hi, May, welcome. So today, um, for this polychromos one, I've done it at a request of uh, someone who has very sore hands and uh, they struggle with colouring. So I'm going to do uh, some cheat blending today, which will be fun. Hi Janine, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So to do the blending today for the skin, I'm going to use some Zest It. Um, but you can use Vaseline, Gamsol, any solvent uh, that will dissolve oil-based pencils. So um, I've tried a couple of other things, but this seems to be the best one in my opinion. Um, for blending. I haven't tried Gamsol though. Hi Helen, hi Holly, welcome guys, come in. So um, yeah, so if, if you've got Gamsol and it works fine for you then that will be fine too. I'm also going to be using uh, today, I've got Bristol, Strathmore Bristol Vellum Surface. Um, I actually never noticed this before, but it's got dry media here. Hmm. Anyway, the zest it's fine on it. I've tried it before, so there you go. Hello, new people coming in. If I've missed you, hi. We've got all of our regulars today. Thank you so much, guys, for my, your support. It means a lot. Been running around like crazy. Getting uh, stuff done here at home. It's spring here. So uh, we've had some beautiful spring days already. Today, not so much. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, Linda. Oh, you do, Helen? Uh, Lisa, I'm in Australia. Victoria. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Am I that far behind my uh, 
chats behind. So that's what we'll be using today. Um, and we're also going to be using Zest It. Now the Zest It I have in a sponge form. If you don't have a sponge form and you've got it in a liquid form like this, then I just popped a couple of, these are ones that I've already used. They're wet still from, I had it covered over so that they would stay moist. And uh, I just poured some on the cotton pad and used that. So there's lots of different ways that you can use it. Um, I find it better to do it on the sponge or on here because it doesn't make the brush as wet as if you were dipping it in, uh, which makes it quite heavy uh, when you're laying it down with the brush. And we don't want heavy layers. We just want enough just to blend the pencil. So a small, small amount. I've also got a little cotton pad here to wipe the excess off because I find that still even using this I get a little bit more excess so I want to wipe that off. Um, also to dry the brush in between so I can blend out what's already on the paper as well. Might be a good idea if I clean my brush first. So I'm just drying them off. I've got two brushes. I've just got a flat and a full bit. Yeah, and I only use these two brushes for blending with this zest it, so I don't they they stay nice and soft. I've already got zest it on them. You can see the oil there. Oh no, Elaine! I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank you. Hi Abby, welcome. Hi Kiki, welcome. Kelly, hi. Welcome guys. That's okay, you should have plenty in the sponge anyway. I've had my sponge for years, so um, when it seems to be dry on the top, I'll turn the sponge upside down and there's still plenty on the bottom, so uh, it generally floats to the bottom floats to the bottom, sinks to the bottom. <laughs> it's more like it. Um, yes, Holly, I already did, but I'll pop it up here. I'm going to be using this one today. The reason is that I found when we did the Michelle Tracy image with the Vaseline, that the paper was so smooth it was hard to get a good color layer down so using something with a little bit of a tooth uh, is going to grip the pencil more and will get more pigment um, I'm going to be using the smooth side of it though there's two sides to the to the surface this one's got a little bit of tooth it works on both sides but I find that I find that my mum always rings me on a Friday morning when she knows I'm live. Anyway. <laughs> just put enough on there to wet the sponge a little bit. So I just sort of do, or do it like this with the gamsole. Um, why does this always happen? <laughs> Excuse me. I need to uh, take that phone off the hook when I'm live. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you only need enough on it uh, to uh, wet the sponge and um, yeah. Don't put too much. <laughs> oh gosh, what a morning already. Just get hubby to uh, do that. And guess what happened? You know, on uh, Monday when I went live, I hadn't received uh, the book that I was waiting on from, uh, which was the Coleridge Wild 4. I actually received it within 10 minutes of finishing up my stream on Monday. I also received the new Jasmine Becker book as well. So I've got two new books there to show you guys as well. <laughs> you missed something? Hello, sparkling Linda. 
What about two Lindas? So this is one I'm going to use today. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I said, uh, smooth side, rough side. Doing it on the smooth side, the reason for that was that when I did it on the rough side, uh, there was a few more speckles and spots through the skin. Um, and on the smooth side, there was a little bit less, so it's a little bit smoother on this side. Hi, Leslie. Welcome. No worries. Alison, I just did one. <laughs> Um, I've done like six in them, I think, in the books. I've done a few on Patreon and a few videos um, on YouTube as well. Oh, you did, Helen? So the sponge um, stops you from getting a lot on your brush. Um, I was just saying that if you were to dip it, you're going to get heaps on your brush and you really don't need a lot. You need like minimal on your brush. Just enough to see that it's kind of damp so we can see here I've just smudged it over my um, it's still kind of shiny there because there's still oil in it you don't need much literally you just need a dab um, so I usually dip dip it or wipe it on my sponge and uh, then I just dry the excess off on my spare cotton pad just to get rid of the excess because otherwise you'll end up with a great big blob um, on your page and it takes forever to dry <laughs> that's all right just um, if you go to um, I think I sent a message to all patrons I can double check I sent it to you later but um, there is a link where it takes you to all the artists that I've done so you'll be able to have a look there it is exactly you don't need much at all You don't need much at all. Yeah, exactly, because you get too much, uh, Helen. So, yeah, having the sponge helps that. So, we're going to do some skin. I'm going to do it quite dark. Um, I don't know why, but I'm going to do it dark. <laughs> <laughs> no problems so um, just use the smallest amount just like a little bit of a drop on your cotton pad and you'll find that it will uh, be enough no worries Lulu I hope you feel better soon you'll be able to come back and watch if you want to follow along anyway so get well oh thanks May thank you <laughs> It's not going to be dark as in um, as in dark skinned. It's just going to be darker than I normally do. It's still going to be Caucasian coloured. Um, just a little bit more tanned. <laughs> you only need enough to wet. Like this has got, you can't even see it in here. You can see like a little bit of residue inside here. But there's hardly anything in there. You only need like a drop on the top. Um, enough to wet your brush with. Uh, so not much at all. I've had this since I started colouring. So um, this has lasted me quite a long time. It's probably nearly been four years now. So it lasts forever. <laughs> um, and that's just with topping it up when it was dry. Uh, also using it for projects like this as well where I've tipped it onto cotton pads um, or I've dipped it where I've needed a lot more. Uh, I've got two different size brushes because uh, one for the small areas and one for the larger areas and um, it can be cleaned off quite easily so if you're worried about uh, wrecking your brushes just a bit of soap will clean that out anyway. It is um, orange oil based and it is made in the UK you can get it if you're in Australia you can get it or New Zealand you can get it at the art shop it's available in bottles and I've seen it in the sponges there as well um, any other place would probably most likely be Amazon UK um, because that's where it comes from 
So, there you go. Hi, Nick and Tina. Welcome. Um, but this beautiful image is called Curly Locks, and it is has been drawn by Dawn Davidson. And um, I did post up the Etsy link for their shop uh, because the Davidson family have an Etsy store and they sell both Dawn and Matt's um, images. So Matt has a different style. He does a lot of, um, I kind of describe them as steampunky type things. And um, obviously Dawn does portraits and things like that. So yeah, you can get it at Jackson's very cheap. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Alison. <laughs> all right so shall we get started we do have a giveaway uh, which i'll do halfway through uh it, it's uh really nice to be able to have artists do that for us so be in the chance to win that and um i'm using polychromos mainly today which i have popped a list up there is a link to the color list and the image in the description it's a Patreon link and it's available to the public there. So you'll be able to see that there. Um, so the colors that I'm using, hee hee hee. I've got a couple of strange colors here. So we'll start with those. Manganese Violet, Dark Thalo Green, Ultramarine. Now these three colors don't necessarily have to be these exact colors. Uh, they are going to be in the skin uh, so I just wanted something with a bit of purple, a bit of green, and a bit of blue. And, um, yeah, so they don't have to be exactly the same. So if you couldn't match them exactly the same, just sort of medium colored blue and a, a medium green and a purple color will work well. It is just to take the orange tone out of the skin. Um, I'm also going to be using dark red terracotta. Put mortum, mortum, cinnamon, which is in this one. If I'm ever using that cinnamon, <laughs> uh, light flesh, ivory, and um, I don't tend to use whites from the polychromo set. I think they're too hard, so I tend to go with either the Luminance white pencil, which is my favourite. It's a lot thicker and more opaque than the Prismacolor. However, the Prismacolor works well as well. So I've got both here. I'll probably use both. I've also got a black pencil. Hello. Ow. Hello, Shadow. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Ow. Hi. Ow. Shadow just had to say her bit. <laughs> um, we are colouring curly locks from Dawn Davidson. Make sure you grab the freebie. It is only available till the end of September 2019. Uh, again, I will post up the link for you if you would like to grab it. I would love if you could tag Dawn in your posts when you're showing off your coloured image. And um, also, if you want to tag me, you can too. That would be great. Hi, Grace, and how are you? Hi, Christy, welcome. Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. <laughs> She's just going to sit and annoy us, I think. Let's get started. First of all, we're going to be using light, light pressure. Oh, yeah, Helen, they do go quickly. That's why sometimes a prism is better because uh, it's a little bit cheaper to replace. Uh, the luminance is approximately double the price of a Prismacolor. So, um, I think I pay $4 for here in Australia. It's like four Australian dollars, um, which is com compared to like $2.10 or something for a Prismacolor. So, um, yeah. <laughs> but I actually do think that they both probably wear down just as quick. So, um, yeah, it's up to personal preference. <laughs> All right, um, kaput mortem, mortuum, mortem, whatever. I know she's funny. <laughs> she is a funny. And uh, we're going to start with the skin. So what I wanted to try to do today was do something a little bit different with her skin. Um, I wanted to show a bit of a of a highlight and shadows quite dramatically in this one. So 
Um, I decided that I want my light coming from a couple of different places, so this side and this side, and um, it's probably more there and there. So around this side of the face, <laughs> um, whether we do something in the background where it looks lighter here and it goes off to really dark uh, into the background here. So because there's not really much here to do, um, yeah, that's right, Helen. Um, so I figured we'd need to do something a little bit different because there's not a lot of element elements in the picture. So um, I thought doing some different types of skin or different shading in the skin uh, would just sort of give it something because there's no real other elements in here apart from her pretty dress down here so and the hair of course which we'll get to we will get to we may not finish the skin today it depends um, how we go so let's get started shall we we shall <laughs> All right, so I'm starting with the Kaput Mortuum. I've got my pencil nice and sharp, but I'm going to leave it on a bit of an angle so I don't get too much pigment coming out. Because this has got a fair bit of tooth on it, we're actually going to see this fairly quickly coming up. Now, if my light's not too bright, which it may possibly be today, so let's just dull it down slightly. No worries, Abby. And uh, we're just going to go and start shading. So this side of my face we're going to make quite dark because it's right in the shadows. Normally I do skin that's pretty much light directly on the face. So I thought we'd try something slightly different today because we've done so many colour alongs. I figured that you're probably just used to just seeing the normal so let's try something a little bit different for a change I was going to use Pablo's but I think I might do Pablo's next month I'm not sure what we're doing next month I don't think I have anything planned actually I might have to do some searching around and see if I can find someone who would like to do some sort of Halloween one we don't actually celebrate Halloween here in Australia very much. It's not a thing. Um, but it still happens, I guess. There's still people that do celebrate it. This month we have our biggest thing is grand final for football, so Aussie rules football is a little bit different to other countries, and that's pretty big here. And um, yeah, that's this month. Bit of fun. I've just gone around the eye there as well. Uh, do I need to zoom in, do you think? <laughs> yeah, Halloween, but I'm not sure. I, I haven't got anything planned yet. I do have something in mind, but I need to uh, ask the artist. So. Now for the nose shadow, she didn't say anything. Um, I'm actually going to use the eyebrow as a bit of a guide to where I want that to go. So I'm kind of going to follow where the eyebrow is and around the nose there. So just coming down. And I want to go around the nose. So we want a fair bit of shadow on this side of the nose. it's going to be in the shadows more whose birthday is it oh yes 18th I saw that happy birthday um, I've got an 18th this year too oh gosh November Mm 
Now I'm going to do the same on this side, but I'm only going to mark it. So I'm going to come down and just mark it out. It's really just a bit of a guide. I want to put a bit of a K shape here. We have got, if we had the light coming from this direction, she's still got a, her cheek uh, here, which would cause a little bit of a shadow be beside the nose and the cheek. So I'm still going to shade in a little bit here. But we're going to do more on this side. It's just coming down, just changing the angle of my uh, paper just so I can get a really good, nice. So Frightlings, who's, who does Frightlings? Who is the author of that? Ah, see, that's different here in Australia. We don't play that kind of football. That's rugby. We don't have, we don't, that's not huge here. Well, it's something, but it's not as big as our Aussie rules football. Now, there'll be a little bit of a cast of highlight, not a shadow, a, a highlight, sort of coming off the top of the nose and around this area. So I want to keep this area free if I can. And I want to keep a fair bit of this side of the cheek here and this side of the forehead that will be clear. Also, we're not going to need um, loads of color on this side of the nose, but a little bit more on this side. So we've got a little bit of a shadow coming in here. I'm going to keep that and uh, I'm going to draw around the nose. I'm going to create a little bit of a half circle under the nose, give it a bit of shape. And what I want to do is I want to leave bit of a gap between this dark spot and where I start again. Because we're using white paper, we need to make sure that we leave those white areas or those highlight areas. I'm doing really, really light pressure here so that we have a really nice highlight there. Just going to double over this side of the lip, adding a little bit of a ditch in there, coming around the bottom, and uh, we're going to do right under the chin here, just nice and lightly up and around the outside. I'm just leaving a gap around this side of the lip so we've got a little bit of a white line around it. That will be my highlight line. And just really lightly coming over the top of the lip. So you can see where I've done it really sort of normal, which is all around here, and where I've done it a lot lighter. You can hardly see it on the paper. Tabitha Thorpe. Ah, I because I ordered this special one, so that's on its way. Yeah. Um, whose birthday? <laughs> Happy birthday, peoples. I think the next one that I've got to order is the calendar. It seems like there's a lot of artists getting into the calendar, so that will be good. Uh, I think that comes out actually today or tomorrow, the 6th, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, I'm going to have a look at Anthem Publishing. And see...
because um, here you have to order it directly, it doesn't come with the subscription, so it's not part of the magazine subscription. Colouring Heaven. I'm not on the oh here we go it's taking me to the shop I couldn't find it <laughs> you could hardly hear me I wasn't actually talking sorry so the next issue of um of the series that's coming with this with my I've got a subscription for it is the dark crystal one and um there is the um calendar supposed to be coming out I think it's today or tomorrow so um, it's not on the website yet, so possibly tomorrow for us here. You can find it in some um, stores or uh, you can do the subscription. I actually find the, found that the subscription was quite uh, reasonable, pr reasonably priced here because it included postage. Um, and uh, it actually ended up being less than what it cost me to buy it in... in a store here. I'm going to add a tiny little bit more of a dark patch here beside the hair and even though there's light coming down on this side of the face I still need to shape it so I'm going to put a little bit of color around the outside here. We don't want to just leave that white. I want to sort of create a little bit of roundness there. So uh, where else do you think we might need shadow? Maybe down here. Let's do that. I'm going to create a little bit of a circle on her chin here. So we've got a nice area for highlight. And I'm um, just really, really lightly going to do a little bit here as well, but really lightly. Just creating a little bit of shape at the bottom here. really lightly just coming up and creating a bit of a circle for the highlights on the cheek just really lightly filling out a little bit more color on the side of the cheek here and just bringing this up lightly around the side. We're going to need it quite dark around this very edge but we will come back over and do a few layers so we'll get darker as we go on. So I have a couple of uh, people who have had uh, couple tunnel operations and are having trouble with their hands so that's the reason I thought I'd do something a little bit different. However, if you are okay and you want to do normal blending, then you'll do exactly the same thing. It's just that on those last few layers, you'll actually be pushing down the tooth of the paper. And uh, creating a nice smooth look that way. Yeah, just really lightly extending on that with really light pressure. So I've got a couple of different layers of color. And I've turned it around so I can get a really good angle on it. Carpal tunnel, yeah. I am actually probably should go get something done about mine, but um, yeah. It's my life. I need to color. <laughs> Alright, I'm happy with the, the shadows on that. I'm going to come into the ears. We're going to do a little bit in here. Yeah, 
this side we're going to put a fairly big shadow around the top of the ear because it's been covered by the hair. Now the neck, have a think about this here. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow here because her hair is kind of leaning out and over her neck there. But just enough to add a little bit of shape, I guess. Going underneath the chin. A little bit. And uh, if the light's coming here and here, we're going to have quite a dark shadow just down here. So I've just marked that out. I'm going to do it firmer here. At, well, not firmer, but cover a few layers up here so it's a little bit darker at the top here. And as I come towards the bottom here, I'm just going to do really light pressure. Okay, so we've got a couple of layers of colour here on the very edges of that dark section and then we've just gone a little bit lighter out here further. We need a little bit of a shadow over her shoulder here. And uh, I think I'm just going to bring that down there a little bit as well. And uh, we're going to need a little bit of a shadow on the top there because the hair is coming over her shoulder so there'll be no light coming through there. There'll actually be a fair bit of shadow at the bottom. Because the light's coming on that direction. So you're going to get a little bit popping through here and a little bit here from this side. Underneath the hair we'll just colour. Get in there some depth and over this side will be quite dark you might get a little bit of light coming through perhaps on this middle bit here but it would only be quite slight so I'm going to just fill that in you can tell when I turn my pencil on the wrong angle and I'm not getting that nice and flat I get some lines there. So remember to keep turning your page so that you get a nice smooth layer. You're not getting like jagged lines through there. Just a little bit of colour around the outside of that curl. And uh, we're going to sort of fill this in quite a bit. Maybe we'll just leave some area here for natural sort of, I guess, so we can get a little bit of roundness on the top of that shoulder. So I'm just going to leave a bit of a round section there. Okay, looking all right so far? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have full of cream. Do you want to see, Linda, what I've got for you? I'll show you in a minute. I'll go grab the bag and have a look at it. It look It's so cool having this little bag of uh, shopping. It's very cute. For those that aren't in Australia, we have this little thing at one of our local supermarkets. Okay, so I've just gone around the collarbone here. I want to create a little bit more of a collarbone on the opposite side. Kind of go that way a little bit. Not too much. Just join those together there. And we can probably even join this side together as well. We want to create a little bit of shape around the chest there. And I think we need to just do a small layer across the bottom there. 
We'll try to create a little bit of a, I don't know, bust shape here if we can. Not too much, just a little bit. Hi Loretta, welcome. I've been uh, watching Netflix a fair bit lately actually when I was sick. I started a few, it's going to be quite dark on this arm, but I still want to create a little bit of shape so we can see it's not just a flat area. So I actually drew a border around mine uh, so that I could stop short and not have to worry about going further. But uh, I do want to create a little bit of roundness, so I'm just going to do it lighter in the middle here. And darker on the edges. Same over this side. Because she's sort of mainly in the shadows over this side. As a bust would be in the way. Assuming she has a bust. She does because she's wearing a corset, so that's going to give her a bust. Alright, so that was the Kaput Mortuum. I'm going to move along and we're going to do a really light layer of terracotta. Otherwise, we're going to end up too orange. So, <laughs> hi Kathy. Welcome. Alright, give me a second. I'll grab those little shop, little shop things for Linda and I'll just uh, show you these cute little shopping items. All right, these are our little shopping items. This is a little bag. And there's tiny little products in them that look like the real product. Even the little shapes, they're like a biscuit. They've got like, oh, it's not shaking yeah. something in them. Little pasta little bread <laughs> a razor I have two Buller creams <laughs> Buller's an Australian brand they do milk, cream, cheese all sorts of things everybody knows what um, Coca-Cola brand is Mount Franklin is Coca-Cola brand water we have more burger sauce dog food they're so cute Little yogurts, muesli, Vegemite, <laughs> you'll be right Vegemite, <laughs> I got two of those but I'm keeping one, <laughs> uh, we've got some milk, A2 milk, supposed to be good for people who have trouble with lactose, uh, this is a pretty good shopping list actually, I don't know what I could make out of a lot of this but uh, Baked beans are good. Two razors. Ah, oh, we need some peas, of course. Don't forget the ham. English style ham. Dishwasher cleaner. So that goes in when you want to wash your dishwasher. And some loo cleaner. <laughs> Isn't it cute? And it's all tiny. It's tiny, tiny. I love the Vegemite. You beautiful Vegemite. So, Linda. <laughs> That's what I have for you. I love the bread. It's so cute. Baby dog food for Nani. I'm not sure what how much I could shave with that. Maybe a Barbie doll could use that one. And there's my big bag of grocery shopping. <laughs> They're not real. They're just plastic. There's nothing inside them. Um... 
but the labels are pretty true to what the real products are they've got all the ingredients and everything on them you need a like a, a magnifying glass to read it though and my UB Vegemite concentrated yeast extract made in Australia since 1973 vitamin B B1 B2 B3 and helps folate also helps fight fatigue anyway balanced yeast diet and and an active lifestyle that's just so funny Vegemite <laughs> all right let's go back to terracotta <laughs> Uh, they're called, it's Cole's, uh, mini little shop. Is that what it's called, Linda? It's very cute. Um, much better than the other things that Woolworths were doing. <laughs> These are much cuter. He runs out looking for a golden trolley, apparently. So I've got, um, terracotta next. Oh, <laughs> actually, uh, Vegemite's good for fleas animals so if the cats um, ended up eating some then it would have got rid of their fleas so I'm doing really light pressure I don't want to do too much because it will make it look too orange just coming over the top of what I've done and I'm just going to extend just that little bit further now across the side of the forehead here There's a line in my paper just here. So um, doing this blending method will help get rid of that because it will soak that pigment into the paper. Really light layer. I don't want to go too much because I found that when I did a heavier layer that the skin color came out too orange and I couldn't sort of rectify that. Um, it did a little bit with the green and uh, blue shadow tones, but not enough. Kind of creating a little bit of a triangle on top of the nose, so we have a bit of a bridge on the top of the nose there. I'm just lightly covering over everything. Once I've done this layer, I'm going to use my first lot of Zest It. Adding a little bit of shape around the nose. One in the ear sections as well, making sure I cover over those. Oh, Linda, that's cool. Yeah, it um, it helps kills fleas. Apparently, I've heard it before. Somewhere, I don't know if it does or not, but. And um. I've heard, I've heard. Uh, I'm not suggesting it or recommending it that uh, using wool wash in the dog's bath uh, helps also to kill fleas because it's got eucalyptus in it but it's only mild so so my guess is that if you just dropped a little bit of eucalyptus oil in their water that might help too you wouldn't want to do too much it'd make their fur go strange forget around the nose under the chin here and I've just extended past the area that I did before so we've created a little bit more coverage over the face so we've got a bit of terracotta over the top of the kaput mortem mortuum however you say it 
and uh, we've also got some of the terracotta by itself. Now I'm going to use the first lot of the um, Zestet. But wait, there's more. Oh, I forgot to do the body. I'll go back down here first. <laughs> it's going to extend past that line that I did before. Just that little bit. Coming around the collarbone down here. Oh, there's a lot of writing there. Oh, Hillary. Watch me do some uh, weird things with paper and that might make you <laughs> We just, you know, make her look really orange and then watch us try to fix it and... Um, you got to try to keep your your pencil like flat as you can like you're picking it up and you're look you can see the tip of my pencil where I've been coloring is flat on the very tip there that's the tip the side of the pen I've been using you can see I've just done the very tip of the pencil I just want to leave a little bit of a line around the high point of the collarbone there as well. Hoping we can get some sort of a breast, <laughs> get some lumps here if we can. Using the collarbone as a little bit of a, a heel top for us. I think the trick to getting it nice and light is not to rush it too much and not to sort of make it too perfect either. You don't want to spend too much time in an area because the more time you spend in that area, the more pigment that will get grabbed on the paper. It's a real technical term that get grabbed. <laughs> There you go, Hillary. You can listen to my really bad English and uh, correct me. there slowly just going down to the arms here If you're in Australia and you're trying to get this uh, Strathmore paper, it's uh, almost impossible to find. And it's quite expensive actually here in Australia. Um, I think I got mine from some, a scrapbook store. I 
cannot remember now, but I did see it at quite a few different places. Uh, I think the postage at the one I got was more reasonable than another one, so I think the price was very similar. Unfortunately, they don't have it at the art shop other than in actual books or banned books, which is a bit of a pain. All right, now I'm going to use my zest it and a brush. I'm just going to pop some on the brush and then I'm just going to make sure I get rid of the excess as well. So I don't want too much. You only need a really small amount for this. <laughs> Loretta. My husband actually did that. He was walking and he hit the side of, he had a really sharp grey lead pencil like you know let's say he was drawing let's say a hard pencil too this is 2H he was holding it like that and he walked along and he hit the side of his desk and it went straight into his hand <laughs> you know a little bit of lead poisoning there <laughs> oh jeez all right let's do this I'm going to use the brush in circular motions and just go over the top of it, blending it together. You'll know when you don't have enough left on there because it'll stop blending it. Just coming around. I'm hardly using any on my brush too. I don't want to leave any residue sitting there. Uh, we're already going to have some residue from where we're actually covering over now. But we don't want to have excess there. We don't want it wet. The other way that you could do something like this would be to use a blending stub. Uh, just dipping your blending stub in, wetting the outside of it. Because the blending stub will take in a lot of the excess. And then you'll just be using what you need on the edge of the blending stub. Just be careful not to put too much pressure down if you do use them because you can push the tooth down too early with them. So just be wary of that. From experience, you know. <laughs> need a little bit more now. Coming back into the terracotta section. good already and I've hardly done any work painting is so much easier on hands too in my experience it is anyway I know Laura Rafferty is the same she has trouble with her hands too okay I think I've got a lot of that area done I'm just going to go re-dip just cleaning off my brush a little bit so I don't have too much and then coming back in starting a new section I know how cool is that <laughs> I have no idea who the bears are but okay Susan you can do that <laughs> oh <laughs> I just lost my footstool just disappeared on me if you want to have a smaller brush for these smaller areas too, you can go ahead and use a littler brush so you can get in there and do those details. I find the littler brush is good because um, sometimes with a larger brush you can blend out um, past the area and just sort of, I guess, smudge it out a little bit too much sometimes in these smaller parts. So if you want to use a smaller brush, get a little bit more precision in there. So the reason that um, I have the purple, blue and green is if I put too much orange on, 
I would use the blue to neutralize it. No, 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 we're not letting it dry. We're just going to go straight over the top of it. Doesn't wreck the brush, it just washes out. You might get, I would use a brush specifically for it though. These two brushes I have set aside and I use them for my zested all the time so I don't have to keep washing them. Um, but if you're finished, go and wash it out with a bit of soap, mild soap. And it should restore your brush to normal. It's just an oil. So it's just like using oil based products. I go back to the bigger brush actually wait before I go back to the bigger brush let's do down under the nose here just making sure I'm leaving that white gap to get a bit of a highlight later on so you can see now there's a gap there okay now I'm going to go back to the bigger brush because it's going to take too long with that one don't forget to get rid of the excess you don't want too much on there it doesn't hurt your pencils because you haven't put enough on there for it to hurt your pencils <laughs> If you've put too much on and it's looking really really wet then it's likely you will eat into your pencils but because we're doing such a light layer and also we're doing a light layer of pencil as well we're not putting too much pressure down we're not going to compromise the pencils Got a bit of line and graininess in the, um, beside the nose there so I'm going to come back in later and uh, put a little bit more pencil in there. We are going to come back over the top of this next with the cinnamon so we're going to be going over the top of all of this including the stuff we've done and adding cinnamon over the top. Just going to grab that smaller brush again over the eye to try and keep that concentration around the crease underneath the eye Keep that line white if I can around the outside. All right, back to the bigger brush. How's it looking so far? Yeah, we're gonna get there, Loretta. I don't want to make it too dark in there. I want to try and keep it as keep give her a bit wider. So I've gone in to here with the um, terracotta already. I just didn't want to go in with that darker color as yet because I want her to have a little bit of a broader nose. Each layer that we put on it's going to get thicker and thicker and we're actually going to be moving the pigment around instead of just blending it out like this. Now 
No, it just dries like it's just the same as a paper because I haven't put any pressure on it so there's no um I know it's hard to explain <laughs> it's just like it there was just paper there you can't feel it afterwards if you're using too much it'll be oily you'll be able to tell I actually find that the uh, Black Widow pencils kind of go a bit oily without having any blending stuff so um, the polychromos are the driest sort of, they're dry oil, but you, I don't, I think it's harder to do something like this with the Black Widows because they're already an oily pencil. So the terracotta was to take away some of the pinkness of the uh, kaput mortuum. Alright, so we're going to do a giveaway in a sec. I'm just going to finish this little face bit off and then uh, we'll play the giveaway rules. This is kind of like painting, isn't it, really? I think you could do this with ink tents too, but using water instead. <laughs> Perhaps on a water based uh, paper too. So I can still see all the little indentations of the paper here. And what will gradually happen is that each layer that we add on, those little grooves and ditches will just gradually fill out because we'll be pushing that pigment around into them. Just zoom out so you can see that. Not in, out. Oh, out. <laughs> How's she looking so far? Thank you. <laughs> oh no, I didn't hear that, Loretta. I won't be getting them. <laughs> um, I wasn't that fast. He's supposed to be bringing a different set out, I think, a different brand. Um, I had heard. Well, I'm going to put the giveaway rules on and get myself a drink and I will be back and we'll do a bit of a giveaway. New colours. He needs some more skin colours because the ones that are in the sets aren't that great. <laughs> you do? You love them? Yeah, I didn't find them that great. I got really frustrated with them really quickly. I mean, perhaps it was paper I was using. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to pop on the, uh, the giveaway rules and we'll come back and do a giveaway. Won't be long.
Okay, so pick one number between 1 and 100, only one number per person. First person to call that number owns it. No chatting during number calling until winning number is drawn. No numbers before the words go, go, go or after stop, stop, stop will be counted. <sighs> that was a mouthful. <laughs> uh, the giveaway today will be for a PDF image from the Etsy shop. The number closest to the generated number without going over will win. Please make sure that you are on live chat. So click on that little arrow above the chat box there. Should be on live chat. Just making sure I'm in live chat <laughs> and not in top chat. <laughs> Any giveaway or promotion is in no way endorsed or administered by or associated with YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or Dawn Davidson. So, um, yeah. Let's go back. So the image we're doing today is by Dawn Davidson. This is the Etsy shop. For those that have already won in last month's giveaway, can you please uh, not enter this one? I'd like to give everybody a chance to win. We've had a few multiples, and um, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, if you guys could wait until next month, and uh, you can re-enter again then. Okay, no numbers yet. <laughs> Let's uh, start, shall we? I'm going to get the website organized on my phone. Awesome. No problems. All right, here we go. Let me... Um, what? I've got all these things coming up on my phone from my mum. Find uh, random.org. Alright, I'm ready to go. Good luck everybody. Have fun. Might just set my timer to give us a minute and a half, say. That should do it. There's only 40 people watching, so we should be able to get them up there. I'm eating yogurt too. <laughs> Morning tea. Mm -mm. I'm going to keep going here until my alarm goes off. Anyway, I hope for those people who do struggle uh, with their hands, I hope this helps them to uh, do some nice smooth blending. It's certainly a lot easier on the hands. And uh, you get this beautiful smooth looking skin without having to do too much pressure. is awesome just rubbing my brush over it go well done guys we had a few last second now here I go and uh, let's do the draw so I've got my random.org here generate 51 51 okay let's have a look Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> we had I had Kathy uh, admins if you want to have a quick look there and let me know what you guys thought I had, um, so you guys, where are my admins gone? I had, uh, number, Kathy had number 38 first, and then I had Loretta afterwards, so number 38 is closest to number 51, without going over it. So, yeah, I had Kathy. Kathy, I had you. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Kathy Davenport, congratulations. So if you would like to go and pick an image from the Dawn Davidson Etsy shop and email it to me here or message it to me, um, that would be great. And here is the Etsy shop again. Congratulations. So there you go. Okay, let's continue. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. I guess I probably should show you what it looks like to put too much on. So, this is uh, actually Nina paper, but I just want to show you on a little bit of Nina. Mm, really wet brush. What it looks like. So we don't want to wet the paper like that. We want to see how you can see that wetting it. We don't want to do that. We want to try to avoid that if we can. Because then when we put our pencils over the top, just drying that off a bit more, uh, we'll have trouble with it being too dark over those really wet areas and we don't want that to happen because we're only using a small amount you may find that you have to go back and re-dip a couple of times uh, once it starts to disappear I finished my Esmeralda this week too by Christine Carr from her new book. So I'll be doing a flip through and speed colouring of that soon and a tutorial on Patreon. may need the smaller brush in these smaller areas so this page is the Strathmore paper isn't a normal standard paper it is 12, 9 by 12 so this is quite a large image blend this little bit here a bit more this is just a cotton pad like a just a face cotton pad like a face you know you buy them from the supermarket in the makeup section it's just or in the first aid section it's just cotton like a cotton ball but in a pad <laughs> 
and that's the same as on here this is just a round one of it it fits in my little dish really nice and neatly I just didn't want to waste I had a little bit of the zested in a tub when I was doing the oil pastel challenge with um, with May and uh, I put a bit too much in so I just used it on top of my cotton pad so I can not waste it all for saving all for saving money that's for sure <laughs> Saving product is good. The biggest wastage that I'm finding I'm getting is um, with my acrylic painting that I've been doing, it's paint dry so quickly. And um, with running off in between to go you know take Nani outside to go to the toilet and things like that sometimes I can be gone for about 20 minutes before coming back and I was finding that it was just drying up so much so um I felt like I was wasting it all the time there are palettes that you can get which are wet palettes but I didn't want to spend any money any more money <laughs> Uh, this is just a filbert flat brush it's not cheap these are the ones with this one's a rounded it's got, filbert is a rounded end uh, but i've also just got a square flat brush too like doesn't matter really um, just as long as it's a soft brush it, a stiff brush um, that you would use for say acrylic or something like that isn't going to work as well i actually don't think i have a cheap acrylic brush here so i can't even show you what i mean Oh. there we go you use my this brush has got hard the white hard bristles and the oil doesn't soak up properly and it will just blob your page so you want to make sure that it's something really nice and fluffy and soft no brand cheap brand <laughs> cheap shop <laughs> So I'm not worried about them. I don't wash them out usually. I just wipe them off and leave them for next time. Coming over. What I've done down here. Starting to fill in these sections. Trying to kind of keep a little bit of a rounded section in here for the bust. If you think about that, the corset will be pushing her up a little bit so she'll have a little bit of a, a high spot there. Of course she will. She's wearing a corset. <laughs> so I guess the top part of the image is actually going to be already dry anyway. Helen, we were talking about that before. So technically you might find that it is kind of dry in those sections we're not using a lot so it's going to evaporate pretty quickly and dry off if you keep your images away in um, a folder or something like that I keep all mine in like a plastic loose leaf folder 
and I find that with the zested images I do need to wait before putting them away or it makes the plastic go all weird. <laughs> Just goes all wrinkly and strange. Cat snoring. <laughs> It is a good idea, but just be wary that you don't use too much. That's why I use the cotton pad to make sure that I've only got residue on my brush and it's not actually dripping with it. Okay, back down to the arms. And then we can move on to the next colour. Just nearing. We've been having some fun with little Nani. She um, is a bit of a nipper <laughs> and uh, we're constantly telling her no for biting or nipping. She nibbles. It's kind of weird but <laughs> um, I think it's just her just squeezing the excess out of that. And um, We've been having lots of fun. She really likes the smell of coffee. I'm just uh, eating the rest of my yogurt here. <laughs> and um, Cameron has a coffee. She's like all over him. Like, give me that coffee. And um, I took a couple of photos of her trying oh it's hard to see there hang on wait turn up my bit better trying to drink out of his coffee cup <laughs> and um obviously there's nothing in it but she thinks it's the best thing in the whole wide world <laughs> she has gotten big um She is a rat bag. Yesterday morning I woke up with a dog scarf around my neck. <laughs> I've got cinnamon and this morning she was like a blanket behind me. Um, cinnamon, I'm going to come over the top of everything. Same pressure, really lightly, keeping my pencil flat as I can. Just coming over everything. Now, if we're lucky, we might get a nice good skin tone and we might not have to use another colour to turn it down or neutralise it too much. But I'm pretty sure we're going to have a fair bit of pink. So, just really lightly. Trying to get an even cover if I can. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see that. She is big. She's um she can actually jump on my couch now. Um 
we've got these little outside couches and uh, she can actually jump on that now and uh, I don't think she's far off getting up onto my lounge room couch either actually extending out past that terracotta now too just coming further across and coming over the bridge of the nose here as well we're starting to add a bit of color in there as I said earlier I didn't want to add too much in there straight away I wanted to gradually build up on there because I wanted to have quite a wide sort of nose just building in I just need to go over these areas some of these detailed areas it's hard to go in with with light pressure so just be careful there go under the nose as well while I'm here starting to see where those really nice shiny highlight points are going to be We've got this side of the face, this edge and side of the ear will be lighter. Most of this ear is going to be covered over so I'm just going to go in with a really light layer of that cinnamon all the way over. Try and get my little highlighted spot here and leave that on the cheek there. want to make sure I get a nice dark side though for this on this side here we'll try and get it nice and dark do a few layers I love cinnamon too it is one of my favorite skin colors I am um, Hi Connie, I just, I did see you there before and I did forget to say hello. I don't think I've ever done a skin blend without it. Actually, cinnamon's a good colour. Cinnamon in most sets is quite a nice colour. Okay, now... Because I'm now going to be coming over it with a really light colour, we're going to go in with some light peach next. I need to actually put a little bit of this colour on some of these white areas. So just really lightly though, just to add a little bit of pigment I guess underneath it so it smooths out nicely with the rest of the skin. So just really lightly and I'm going to miss the areas I want to keep really nice and bright though. I'm just really lightly coming over this section here and I'm leaving a really white section down the middle there 
So I just want to add a tiny little bit on the forehead here. Just a little bit. We want to keep this nice and white as our highlight though. Before moving on and doing this layer smooth, I won't actually, do you want me to should I go down and do the neck? It's going to take me too long, I think. I might just uh, continue to work on the face here and we can get back down to the rest of it later. Um, I've got light flesh and I'm going to repeat the same steps. So I'm coming over everything, coming over, light pressure. What you'll notice is now you'll be starting to grip on the pencil because we've sort of uh, added a couple of layers on there now. But you don't need to put any pressure down because that color pigment is still just building up on the top and once we uh, go back over it with that zest it or whatever blender you have that is going to blend out nice and smooth just a bit of a ditch in my paper there so i've just filled that in a little bit there's another one here too so i'm just gonna Try to go into the groove. There's a bit of a groove in the paper. Might be hard to see there, but coming over really lightly over those areas that we just went over lightly with the other colour. And if you've got imperfections or areas that need darkening or lightening, uh, we can play with those later on as well. I just want to go in different directions to cover more of the tooth. Still got a bit of texture coming through and I want to make sure I cover that over. But I don't want to see you pushing down really hard, just keep it nice and light. And just repeat over the same area to add pigment. It. At least I'm not breaking it. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of this light fresh flesh around the eye. fresh light light fresh not light flesh <laughs> this color is really fresh <laughs> it's really fresh 
Just zooming out a little bit there so you can see what I've done. You can blend uh, with the zest at each layer if you like. It doesn't really matter. You can wait. I would definitely do it after two layers because uh, otherwise the pigment, you'll end up just moving it around rather than sort of dragging it into the tooth. Uh, you're going to be just pushing around on top of the paper because the more layers you put on, the more you'll have there. So she's starting to look a lot darker than I would normally do. <laughs> Let's blend that out. I think I might actually start with the lighter section. I'm going to turn it upside down so I can do that. Yeah, the, the uh, medium flesh color in the polychromo set is like a waste of time it's just pink it would look nice on the lips and you know, around the eyes and things like that just starting from the lightest area and moving back into the darker area I don't want to blend too much of that darker color in to the lighter area if I can help it It's really starting to look nice now. It's looking nice and smooth now too. I also know there's a lot of pigment on there now because it's starting to I can actually see the zest it's sitting on top for a moment before it blends in these darker areas Now I can see areas that are going to need to be darkened and lightened. <laughs> yeah, Linda, that's right. I do too. No, don't forget thumbs up. I use it around the fleshy parts of the eye and stuff as well. Now I think I need to go a little bit darker in the bridge of the nose here so I'm actually going to do the kaput chulin again and just add a little bit more just there. <laughs> I caused a dip. Let's 
just cinnamon again. Evening those areas out a little bit. I'm just going to wait for that to dry a little bit before trying to blend that off. Because I've just done the pencil directly over it, I'll just wait a minute. Otherwise, I'm just going to wipe it off the top. So maybe it does take a little bit longer than uh, blending with pencil directly, but still going to get the same nice smooth effect without as much damage to the hands. Well, that's my theory anyway. It's much easier for me to hold a paintbrush. with no pressure than it is for me to hold a pencil with pressure. Oh, I'm so excited to see what you do, Helen. Thank you. Have a great night. And um, I will see you shortly. What is the time? Oh, I've still got 15 minutes. All good. Oh, I just uh, forgot to wipe off my brush then and uh, it's left a little bit of a wet patch. You can see a little bit of lightness look on the back. But just there it's a little bit wetter because I forgot to wipe my brush off. Right a bit there now. Now the bottom part. Of her face. I did think that this would take a little bit longer than normal. But um, that's okay. As I said, there's not as many elements in this one, so uh, we'll need a week for hair and uh, possibly two weeks for the skin now because we've still got to do down the bottom here now as well. So I've only done the two colours so far. And then we'll need the final week for the clothes and the background. Don't forget the ears. She's looking really nice. I think we've really got a good foundation for shadows and highlights now. We've also got some really nice smooth skin tone already.
Now these two bits here, I'm just going to leave them and I'll blend them off again with later on once it's dry. Um, I think it it's just because this section here was quite wet when I went back over it. So I will go back over it again and re-blend it out later. I'm just adding a little bit more cinnamon in there. I just want to deepen that up a little bit. All right. I make it look easy. <laughs> uh, oh, good. Alright, I've got ivory. It's a pretty colour. I'm going to use the next 10 minutes and I'm just going to go over everything with the ivory now. I'm hoping that the yellow tones in the ivory will help just get rid of some of the pink in it, which may mean that we don't need to add any other colours into the shadows, but just a little bit more depth. So this with the terracotta, hoping just to even it out nicely. I like that. It's looking good. Just light pressure. It's so easy now to go over the top of this because it's all nice and smooth. I'm going to add it over the top of the white areas as well now. A bit quiet today. Don't know what to talk about. <laughs> Something. What do you guys think I should talk about? The kettle. The kettle's boiling. Let's talk about the kettle. No, no. <laughs> She's really starting to look nice now. Looking nice and smooth. We're definitely going to need to add a little bit more depth into those highlights though. I think we need it. In there too enthralled <laughs> yeah it has been quiet it is quiet everyone's just uh just uh enjoying watching it come to life it's so awesome though when you get an image that's just lines on the page and uh, it starts to come alive like this looks so much more real and beautiful Oh, 
know what that was from. That must have been from here. It looks like it's a little bit thicker and it's just scratched off a little bit. This colour is nice too. You could use ivory or cream for this bit, I think, in the polys. The cream is a lot more yellow though, so depends on what you're going for. Linda, did you get your Hannah Cow's own book? I forgot to ask this week. Can't believe how quickly my Jasmine Beckett book came to. I ended up ordering it directly from the uh, publishers, Blue Angel, I guess. And uh, it came within, I don't know, three days or four days. I was going to pre-order, I had pre-ordered it on Amazon, but um, yeah, it was going to take forever. It said like February or something. It was weird. forget the ear. Cup of time. Thank you. <laughs> oh good. I'm spoiled. How she look? Her eyes are going to be blue and green. Her lips are going to be red. So she's looking pretty good. I actually quite like that. I might just go, I don't think I even need to actually. I think I might just leave uh, the blending. I don't think I need it, but I will come in <clears throat> with my luminance. But let's use the baby one because there's not much left of it. And let's just come over these light sections. And I did put a little bit of pressure in here because I want to make sure I get that nice light highlight. And I want that highlight to kind of blend out into these dark areas on this side. just out over her forehead a little bit here too. I just want to add definitely into the nose here. We want to give her a nice broad nose. Just adding a few little detailed highlights around the outside. So considering this is the only part where we're actually putting a little bit of pressure down, I think we've done quite well.
and a little bit more maybe the lighter parts of the cheek there and I think I'm done I think she's pretty much done this section of the face which is kind of good we've got one bit done I just love how smooth it's coming out and just how easy it is to get that beautiful look without too much work well that was a bit of work without too much pressure on our hands <laughs> let's do this chin section here so what we're actually doing just now is we're just brightening up the highlight a little bit and we're just blending it out a little bit too so it doesn't look quite so I don't know, standoffish, I guess. Coming around the lip. Okay, we're going to add a few more extra highlights in around the eyes. But I found when I was doing this earlier, I couldn't get enough pressure in with the luminettes. So, for some reason, I found that the... You can do your nose as wide as you want to. I was just... I wanted her to have a little bit of a wider nose. Do a bit of a bowl on the end of the nose. So the wider that uh, highlight is, the wider the nose looks. Um, so with the white Prismacolor, I found that I got a little bit more intensity in these areas that I was re-highlighting, I guess. <laughs> all right um, I do think that it needs a little bit more depth so I'm going to use that mag manganese violet just a little bit and just darken up some of these shadows especially around the nose You don't need to put much pressure because we've already got that um, zested on the page. We actually have something to help smooth it out a little bit. And you don't need to put pressure on for the pigment to come on the page. It just seems to go smooth over the top of it. Just think she needed that little bit of extra depth. Maybe you guys didn't think so, but I really wanted her to stand out. I didn't want her to look really flat and 
marvelous. I hope that's given her a bit more depth. <laughs> okay, well, there is something that you can try, uh, Leslie. Uh, there's these little activities by a guy who does something called the five pencil rule. And uh, what he asks you to do, he calls them... I don't know what he calls them actually, um, but I just did it with grey lead pencil. I've been practicing with my grey lead. But the idea is that you move from well, it's got rubbing from the other side there, but you move from the darkest, still using really light pressure on your pencil, and you try and gradually move out until you get till there's no paper left. And uh, it's supposed to help you with the pressure of your hand, so making sure that you have consistency. So uh, starting uh, using just light pressure, just flicking my pencil up and down on the paper to get a darker colour, just coming over it and over it and over it, rather than pushing down really hard. But yeah, just going over, 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 and then lightening it up. So you gradually end up with hardly any pressure on the page. Great practice. Just grab a piece of paper and practice. Okay, coming back over all of that now with the Caput Mortem because I don't want it to look purple. To add a bit of that ready brown back over it. So purple is blue and red together. We're using blue to get rid of some of the orange tone. Still not sure about that nose. Having second thoughts about the size and shape. <laughs> I have a thing with noses at the moment. I just did a, a faces tutorial, face shadow tutorial, and um, one of the faces I did, her nose came out really strange, but <laughs> we fixed it. Let's add a little bit more cinnamon just to blend it in with the rest of the skin. Some light. I'm only doing light pressure and it's the product is picking up that colour for me. Because it's still wet. I definitely felt it needed that depth though on that side. What do you guys think? Did I need to do that? This ear was too light too, just filling in a little bit more. I think I needed it.
Yep, good call. All right, awesome. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Oh, I need some more. As you can tell, I used a blue pencil in that and it's just spread out over the... Let's use the zest it to blend that out. We can always come back over it with white if we feel like we've gone too dark too. And you'll notice with this layer as I'm blending, you're going to get a lot more movement of the pigment and you don't want to move it too far. So just try to stick to the areas that you've colored because you will spread it out too much if you're not careful. Definitely needed it. That really made it. And it also gave her a little bit more shape on her cheek here too, which I felt was just sort of moving, it was just sort of flat, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of definition there, couldn't find the word then. Sometimes I seriously feel like I'm losing memory. Just grabbing some of the white and blending it back over those areas of the nose that I felt were just too dark. Darkening up that ear a little bit. How are we going? What do you think? Make a difference? I think it made a huge difference just adding that little bit of purple now if I had made the color too yellow or too too yellow then purple is a good color if I'd made it too orange and adding a bit of blue would be good too um, or if it was too orange um, too red or pink you could add also a bit of um, green uh, which is a complementary color to red uh, and it would actually change the color slightly as well. So have a play with those complementary colors in your skin because they will help with the shadows and um, making it look nice and rich in the shadow areas and light in the highlights. Oh no, I just went over the hair. Thinking about doing some burgundy brown red hair, I don't know, burgundy, I don't know, auburn, I don't know yet, I haven't played with it very much, but she's definitely going to have blue and green eyes, which we'll get to later, and she'll have nice red lips, and we'll also go in, I think, and we'll re 
do around the eyes with some black and um, yeah so I don't think we'll be adding any colors next week I'm pretty sure we're going to be finishing off the rest of the skin and we're using uh, the same pencils to do the eyes and the mouth and things as well so I think we're good I think I've taken over my time and my cup is going cold so I'm just going to drink that this cup has written on it it's uh, actually like it's hard to show you here but it's wool and it's got inside it knit one sip one <laughs> it's purple wool I'll have a go especially if you struggle uh, with hard of hand <laughs> um, I like it it's good fun it does take a little bit longer but uh, it's worth it especially when you have problems with your hands I find it um, it works well Just wanted to round that shadow off slightly. That's better. And I think this one needs to be a little bit lighter. You know what? I'll probably play with it again uh, when we come back to it next week anyway. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. Oh, I'm so glad, Leslie. Yeah, it says, uh, yeah, nip, nip, knit some, knit some. You can see it's kind of wool. It's like purple wool. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. I do, I do. Just using a bit more white there. I'm really happy with that. It's nice and smooth too. It's not like... um you there there's a couple of little like speckles from the paper but uh, other than that it's pretty smooth when it first started it looked like that on the skin there and then now we've finished that's what it looks like now hopefully I can uh, repeat the same colors down the bottom here <laughs> it is actually looking quite pink so I may need to add a little bit of green to that as well but we'll do that next week don't avoid them. Practice. Have fun. Um, if you are a patron, of course, I just posted up a video on this changing the light source and where the light's coming from and how it can dramatically affect your images as well. So that's something to have a look at. And um, yeah, so coming, we have Christine Karen's new book and image. Let me grab it. Just finished off this beautiful image. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, it took me a while, this one, because I couldn't decide on colours and... And uh, I was having one of those days where, I don't know if you do a, a job in particular that you do often and you're really good at, and sometimes you just have doubts or second thoughts or... or it doesn't quite come out how you thought that it was going to come out. Um, that kind of happened to me last week. So it did take me a little bit longer because I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Um, so yeah, I'll do a speed coloring and a flip through on YouTube. And I'll also do a full video on Patreon. So she is. No, I love her. Love her. Um, so... I will see you guys next time, Monday, and we'll do a flip through of Jasmine Beckett's new book and uh, the Colorage Wild number four, and we'll do an image out of one of those. So, you do that all the time. <laughs> I do too, Loretta. No, I don't really. I'm usually fairly confident when it comes to this kind of thing, but for some reason, I couldn't get anything right. <laughs> so, it was just one of those days. Anyway, all good. Thank you so much for watching, guys. A big thank you to Dawn Davidson for this beautiful image. If you'd like to grab it, it is available as a freebie for September 2019. I'm posting the link in the chat. It's also in the Patreon link under the description. So click on the Patreon link to Color Charts and it will give you a, um, a link to the image and also to the color conversion. So I've done a color conversion from 
Polychromos Pencils 2, Prismacolor, Black Widow, Holborn, Pablo's, Shapir Farben, and Colorsoft this time. I did some Colorsoft conversions. So uh, if you don't have Polychromos, you can use one of those, or you can mix them up if you like. It doesn't really matter. I will see you next time. Thanks again, guys. Bye.